Brute, past the realms of Gaul beneath the sunset, lieth an island, girt about by ocean, guarded by ocean, erst the haunt of giants. Desert of late, and meet for this thy people, seek it, for there is thine abode forever. There by thy sons again shall Troy be builded. There of thy blood shall kings be born, hereafter sovereign in every land, the wide world over. Well, that poem, some all oh, well over eight centuries ago, was written by a monk called Geoffrey. He later became a bishop about the alleged landing here in Albion, England, at Totnes, of one Brutus, the son of Aeneas of Troy. Well, it's a nice legend. It's nice to believe it could have happened, because if you don't know Totnes, well, Totnes is the sort of place which breeds lovely legends. I think Totnes, far and away, one of the most beautiful of the Devon towns. And it's extraordinary sometimes when you're in it nowadays to pause and try and realize that there was a time in its history and it was far more important than Plymouth, far richer, far more prosperous, and far busier. And if the start of old England was here at Totnes on the head of the river, then the New World also owes a lot to Totnes because John Wills, a Totnes man, was the first man with his companion Burke to open up Australia by setting off to walk across it. He died in the process through starvation, and the monument to Wills also stands in Totnes as you drive in before turning left over the bridge if you're going on to Torquay. I think the reason why Totnes is so unknown today and possibly neglected is because people roar through it on their way to and from Torquay to Newton Abbott, Newton Abbott, on to Kingsbridge one way, on to Plymouth another, and so they don't pause, they don't stop, and they don't see what there is in this very lovely town. And all you've got to do is to walk up 4th Street, past where Brutus landed, and there in the ground is the stone, marked Brutus Stone, up to where 4th Street becomes the High Street, it changes its name, which seems to prove as well that the river must once at one stage come, have come right up there, right up 4th Street. Under the East Gate, which spans the road there, and you've got a wealth of architecture there just to look at. You've got perhaps some of the most beautiful 15th, 16th, 17th century houses still in pretty good condition. The Elizabethan house in itself, which has been restored by the town and is now a small museum, is unique. Across to the right, going up the street, you've got the Church of St. Mary's, its tower, its red stone tower you can see from here in the distance, and that is worth a visit on its own. The Guildhall, 15th century, beautiful, and as you go right on up towards the top of the high street, you've got, of course, the Butter Walk, and it's unique architecture because it's built out over the road, the top sections, onto columns, and... I believe this was because underneath they used to hold markets under there, so all the stalls went in under there. And if you happen to branch off from there, across to your left, you'll come across what I think is called Lynch Well Lane. Now, if you go across to the left, over into Lynch Well Lane, and walk right up to the end of it, to the Kingsbridge Inn, and why not indeed? Um, some of the cottages and little buildings along there are beautiful anyway. You've got the promise of the inn at the end. And go down to your left there, and you'll come across three carved water troughs with water pouring in them out of the wall. And there used to be there, and I believe a wall still remains, an old leper hospital. And nobody really goes here, so nobody sees them, and they're worth a visit. You can see where possibly they once bathed. On your way back down the high street, pause and just look at the new Civic Centre there, where they hold every year, they hold the Devon Guild of Craftsmen exhibition in there, and it's worth coming to Totnes for that alone. And on your way out, don't forget as well to look at the castle, Norman Castle, but it was obviously built on 
what had been a fortification for centuries before the Normans arrived here. Totnes is a town for walking. The motor car has tended to spoil it and there doesn't seem much anybody can do about it. But wander around and have a look at your leisure at some of the beauties still left in a real old Devon town. And I hope you enjoy it. <laughs>